morning. So in class we were talking about how this table of results that you can get from an experiment leads to an order of ion strength of oxidizing agent where this is the strongest oxidizing agent because it reacted the most. This is the strongest reducing agent because it's the reducing agent that reacted the most. And you can list them in order. And from that order you can build a table like this. And if you look at this table, it has quite a bit of to do with the spontaneity rule. Uh, if I were to put together a G1 plus and PB solid, I should get a spontaneous reaction because the waterfall flows down. And if you look up at our table of results up there, you indeed see the AG1 plus and the PB solid did form a spontaneous result. I can go and find another one that should be non-spontaneous. So let's look at copper 2 plus and AG solid should be non-spontaneous. So that's AG solid and copper 2 plus, AG solid and copper 2 plus being non-spontaneous. So the spontaneity rule can help us build a table, the table can help us build the, the one that looks like a data booklet. They all are linked together. So a question that involves reactions and spontaneity uh, can, can kind of go with any of these uh, answers, one of these, or one of the a flowchart, or a list, etc. And so that's what this page of questions is about. Okay. Considering the following redox reactions, which represent spontaneous reactions in an experiment. So. Some students put together some cobalt. Can you see that? Oh, really, I'll move it slightly. Some students put together some cobalt solid into some PD2+. And indeed, it was a spontaneous reaction. So we're going to set this up knowing that the waterfall is going to flow down for these two things. And we're going to set it up exactly like the data booklet. Because then we don't kind of make things muddled up. And so in our data booklet, we have the strongest reducing agents down there and they go up to the weaker reducing agents. We have our strongest oxidizing agents up there, and here are our weakest oxidizing agents. And over here are metals, and over here are metal ions, just like our data booklet. You can have a little look inside and you can see they are the same. So if I arrange these two with this metal in the metal section and with the ion in the ion section, our waterfall should flow down because it was a spontaneous reaction. So I'm going to put the PD2 plus into the metal ion section. I'll just put it right in the middle, PD2 plus. And I'm going to put our CO solid into the metal section, CO solid. And I'm going to arrange them so that this line of PD2 plus and that line of CO solid the waterfall flows downwards. Spontaneous. Spontaneous. Okay. So then I just sort of fill in the rest of the information. Like, for example, the PD2 plus will have gained two electrons to become PD solid, as it says there. PD solid. And the CO2 plus will be losing two electrons to become CO2 plus, as it did there. And so I'm reading left to right and right to left. Uh, just like we do in our data booklet, and I'm setting this up just as I do as a, in our data booklet. And now I know that CO is a stronger reducing agent than PD is. Okay, so continuing on with our information, the other two metals they put together is the PD solid and the PT2+. Plus. So again, I'm going to put the ion on this side and the metal on that side, arranging the ion to be above the PD, so the waterfall flows down because it's spontaneous. So the PD solid is already there. So I'm going to have to have my PT2 plus be above it. So PT2 plus be above the PD so the waterfall flows down across that middle section. So gaining two electrons to become PT is just finishing off that sentence like it would be in the data booklet. And you can see that across this line, this side is higher than that side, so the waterfall flows down, therefore it is spontaneous. Okay? I'm just going to rub that out so that it looks a little neater for us. All right. 
The third piece of evidence says that Mg and CO are spontaneous, CO2+. Plus. So that means our CO2 plus must be above the Mg solid in order for that waterfall to flow down. So arrows, two electrons, Mg2 plus, just finishing off that line as it would look like in the data booklet, and this is a spontaneous reaction. They could have, and they will on a future question, give you another piece of information that was non-spontaneous. Okay? And if it's non-spontaneous, the waterfall would have to flow upwards. So for example, they could have said, oh, let's pick CO2 plus, and PT solid was non-spontaneous. So this 10, I'm listing the solids first, so I'll do that too, but it doesn't really matter. The PT2 plus and the CO, I mean, PT solid and the CO2 plus would be a non-spontaneous reaction. We would have predicted it would have become P22 plus and CO solid, but that didn't happen because it was non-spontaneous. So they could give you another piece of information that was non-spontaneous, and that just means that you have to arrange them so that the waterfall flows upwards instead of downwards. And so the remainder of the questions are exactly the same. We've answered everything it says. It says a table of relative strengths of oxidizing reducing agents, writing the half reaction equations, and labeling the strongest oxidizing agent and reducing agent. So it covers all of our basis of everything they've asked for. If it just asks for a list, like list the strongest to weakest reducing agents, we can then say, well, Mg is the strongest reducing agent, CO is the second, PD is the third, and PT is the fourth for our weakest reducing agent. And so we could list them in order of strength and weaknesses there. And that's it. You should be able to do the rest of the sheet now.